Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the rich man and Lazarus. Jesus told more than 30 parables to help people to learn how to live a life that is pleasing to God. People loved not only the miracles Jesus performed, they loved the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that he wanted to change. Last week, we concluded our study of the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. In the end, we discovered that the lost son was not the younger son, but the older son. The younger son returned to the welcoming arms of his father. He discovered that in spite of all the shameful things he had done, that his father still loved him. His father was willing to forgive him and to restore him. Shockingly, we learned that the older son rejected his younger brother and his father's love, and he remained lost. He is the lost son. The point that Jesus was making is that sinners accepted the message that Jesus brought, but the religious leaders rejected him and his message. Everyone has the same choice. We can accept or reject the message that Jesus carried. In this week's parable, we learn about the afterlife destinies of a rich man and a poor man by the name of Lazarus. Jesus said there was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen who feasted sumptuously every day. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. The Phoenicians were famous for extracting purple dye from murex shells. It was costly because each shell yielded a very small amount of purple dye. For this reason, only the rich could afford to buy purple fabric. It became the color of royalty. It is interesting to note that although the rich man was well known, that we don't know his name. Jesus said, at his gate laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to feed with what fell from the rich man's table, Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Luke chapter 16, verse 20, 21. The poor man, whom no one cared about, is the only character in all of the parables who is named. Lazarus is the Greek form of the Hebrew word Eleazar, and Eleazar means one whom God has helped. This parable is about a poor man who was helped by the Lord. It is also a warning to every one of us to prepare for our eternal future. We learn that before long, the poor man died and was carried by angels to Abraham's side. Luke chapter 16, verse 22. Then unexpectedly, the rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in turmoil or torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. Luke chapter 16, verse 22 and 23. The Old Testament teaches that before Jesus came to earth, when people died, they either went to Hades or to a place called Abraham's bosom. In this parable... Jesus describes an imaginary conversation taking place between the rich man and the patriarch Abraham. Jesus said that the rich man cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and, and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool off my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. Luke chapter 16, verse 24. Abraham replied to the rich man by saying, Remember that in your lifetime 
you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. Luke chapter 16, verse 25. Abraham went on to say, Between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able to, and none may come across from there to us. Luke chapter 16, verse 26. The rich man pleaded with Abraham, saying, I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they come to this place in torment. Luke chapter 16, verse 27 and 28. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Luke 16, 29. To which the rich man said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Luke chapter 16, verse 30. Over the last 20 years, much research has been done with people who have had near-death experiences. There are popular books and movies on people who've been taken to heaven and and reported on the peace that they felt and the beautiful things that they saw. But serious scholars have interviewed people from a wide range of religious backgrounds, including atheists, and people from diverse ethnicities to inquire about their after or near-death experiences. They have discovered that people have reported not only having heavenly encounters, but they have also had dark or hellish encounters. In the past, people have seemed reluctant to talk about their negative near-death experiences. But more and more, people are coming forward to share their stories. Frequently, they speak about seeing people wailing or gnashing their teeth. And many use the words that Jesus used in this parable, describing their experience as a place of torment, intense heat, and anguish. They describe seeing cruelty beyond anything they'd ever seen in horror movies. Their experiences sound familiar to many of the things that the Bible warns about. In all of these cases, when people reporting their near-death experience, whether they were positive or negative, describe a point in which they were not allowed to go any further. Researchers call this the point of no return. If that person passed that point, they could not return to their bodies. And many people recall being given a clear choice to move on or to return. Now, the best news is that some people with terrifying or hellish experiences remember being given a second chance. Some recall stories from the Bible they learned when they were very young. They cried out to God for help. And God, in his mercy, did indeed help them. And most of them, when they returned to their bodies, made significant changes in their spiritual lives. These reports have helped people Think about what happens after one dies. Now, the Bible is clear. Hell was created for Satan and his demons, but not for people. It is not God's will that any person end up there. But from the reports of people with near-death encounters, it seems that demons have the ability to take people there. Jesus' parable ends with an unexpected twist. Abraham warned that people are unlikely to take these near-death experiences to heart. Abraham said, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. Luke chapter 16, verse 31. Moses and the prophets all said, that God would send Messiah to save the people. Isaiah clearly prophesied that Messiah would be rejected and suffer a cruel death. And the purpose of this parable was to once again expose the hearts 
of the religious leaders. The words that Abraham said to the rich man about people not believing if someone came back from the dead were about to be proven to be true. Not long after Jesus told this parable, he raised another man by the name of Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus was the last of three people Jesus raised from the dead. Yet instead of praising God for these mighty miracles, we read that a great many came, not for Jesus' sake only, but also that they might see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also. John chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. The religious leaders could have interviewed Lazarus to see what he learned during the three days that he was in the grave. They preferred to silence his voice by plotting to kill him and Jesus. Abraham was right. Just because someone is raised from the dead does not mean people will believe in life after death. Many people prepare for their funeral, but do not prepare for the moment of their death. The Bible teaches people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. It also says we are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8. The Bible promises that those who follow Jesus will pass from this life immediately into the presence of God in heaven. Heaven is mentioned over 700 times in the Bible. Heaven is a city without a cemetery. What a happy thought. If you wish to be present with the Lord for all of eternity, we invite you to receive Jesus as your Savior. He is the one who died for you in your place on the cross so you can be forgiven. Ask him to forgive you for all of your sins. If you just decided to follow Jesus, write to me and I'll share more information with you on the blessing of following Jesus. Next week, we'll continue learning from the parables of Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.